So there we go. Number 11, nearly done. However, today the lecture might actually take a little bit longer. So I ask you not to run away. I have this room for half an hour longer. I got some international speakers here in the uh, second part of this class. So uh, if we kind of draw longer and kind of if it should take half an hour longer, we start 15 minutes later tomorrow, yeah, in the lecture. But I think that's a nice opportunity to, um, I first just thought we would just talk to one person, but it turns out we will actually talk to three persons. And two of them are really big guys in the uh, Internet of Things scene in Brazil. So um, I don't know them myself yet, but I have been promised a lot. So we will see <laughs> where that actually heads. Okay, uh, as you see, we start with a small exercise for you. <laughs> and. Um, we are kind of, there comes a little bit of theory next time uh, still, but we are nearly through. And we are at a point where I want you to think about potential business opportunities. And so I want you to actually see what is hot in Internet of Things at the moment. Where can you make some money? Where are the uh, opportunities to actually have your own startup and profit from the recent development because you all are now equipped with amazing skills and you could consider finishing your bachelor and then making the next big in general of things company and so today's lecture is a little bit kind of giving you the courage to consider at least making something on your own and hopefully this will inspire an even better project three for you so what I want you to google about the business opportunities and the internet of things and um, I would like you to do that kind of in the Project 3 teams because I want you to relate to your scenario you are actually thinking about. So uh, look for some articles where people really, uh, well, can, can be, doesn't need to be really from a big publication, but I want you to have some more content in there. So pick five research articles. There's one article which I really like, which is called What the Internet of Things Means for Small Business. And then, yeah, divide and conquer. Share the articles between the team members and try to answer the following questions. Yeah, so three, in, uh, three implemented successful business ideas in the Internet of Things. Um, three failed business ideas. So what have people tried and weren't successful? And from there, derive what are the challenges and opportunities arising from Internet of Things for small business. And then we will discuss this um, in regard to your own uh, idea you have. So we'll do 15 minutes of research and then I want you to discuss if actually what you are doing here might be valid for a business or at least a non-profit uh, project. While we do the discussion, I want you to prepare an idea statement so that you can explain this idea you have from your scenario. So don't show, so later I look at your whole scenarios, but now you want to more have this business approach so that you can do an elevator pitch and tell somebody in a minute what your project is about. And um, I want you to have a critical look at your own stuff. So, and see at least uh, two arguments against it and three arguments for it. And this is what you will then present here in class to each other. Good. Okay. So, because there's a second exercise, I'm sorry I have to stop you with this one. Um, of course, it would be nice if you kind of continue at one point. I think that, I, I hope these are good questions to think about your own ideas and compare if this is actually a valid business endeavor you're embarking on. Can we start somewhere with presenting the elevator pitch here and then also the rest of the team can help to fill in the five arguments two against and three for your own business idea who would shall i pick or is there somebody who's already ready so to give somebody else an advantage as i would start actually up there <laughs> yeah that would be nice so just uh, 
about a minute. So I'm, I'm, I'm not killing anybody if you need one and a half minutes. I don't kill anybody if you just need 30 seconds. No, no, it's just fine. Very good, very good, nice. Um, so what are kind of the th two disadvantages and three advantages again? Or okay. somebody else from your team can help. No, it's okay. So the, the advantages are it's like a cool gadget. <laughs> okay, because we can, yes. <laughs> and it makes you kind of feel secure. Mm -hmm. Security is of course definitely pro and lots of people want it. Mm -hmm. uh, you are independent from keys. So you can just open your garage remotely via mm. app and that you don't need any special furniture or any special Okay, and so what could be a problem? <laughs> Why do you think that could be a fail? Yeah, we have two cons. Um, And you don't have a maintenance plan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yet. Yeah. And that we don't have a big customer community because I think when we go out and do that stuff, stuff yeah. business, we won't have like a thousand customers. Oh, you just need funding. You just need to con convince an investor. That's a maintenance plan. It's called maintenance plan. We have to replace the battery. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, very, very good. Very nice. Um, can we start kind of going to the right from my direction or to the left from your direction? Are you the same team? Then uh, what about your team? <laughs> oh, it's Bernard again. <laughs> You're kind of a second star in my lecture already. <laughs> Cultus, oh, you have even a name, great. This is a, it's a smart solution with internet of things for managing public toilets, public toilets, especially the cleaning of public toilets. Uh -huh. uh, we track the usage of the toilets and optimize the cleaning intervals to avoid unnecessary cleaning. Uh -huh. to, to say uh, you have to clean now or there is something broken. Uh, the usage behavior of the toilet users is tracked and sent to a central server where the depending on the usage figures the cleaning personnel is informed which cleaning tasks have to be done in their respective toilets so like uh, there is water on the floor or there is too much smell in the toilet something <laughs> like that uh, near toilet paper some things the, the dustbin is, is full and these are the, the things <laughs> very good so um what, how do you see to, what are arguments for succeeding with this project and two so arguments why you might fail? Uh, our pro arguments are it's uh, convenient for the cleaning staff uh -huh. um, it's an uh, optimization of the whole process so less used toilets are cleaned less and more, more used toilets are cleaned more often mm -hmm. um, there are better hygiene aspects so like the now often toilets are so rarely cleaned that they are really not hygienic anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, you can avoid unnecessary cleaning tasks and save money 
to do less personal and material goods. Okay, good. So what could stop you from world domination? <laughs> so the, the counter arguments are it's uh, more expensive than now, so you have very expensive equipment sometimes to build up all the toilets with the sensor, etc. And we in public of the, the of the many toilets. Mm -hmm. so I don't, I don't, but I think it might pay off. So I, I think uh, that you are good. At e actually, on the long term, getting cheaper argument might yes, counter some of your con arguments. Very nice. Okay, next team. It should be faster. Um, so our project idea uh, was around nursing home automation. Mm -hmm. might save lives. That's a nice con argument actually to kind of the abuse of the system. <laughs> I can share some articles with you where kind of this pill dispenser has been kind of one of the really hot IoT applications. I don't know if you stumbled upon it. So uh, people are willing to put money in something like that. Good. Um, and well, team number four. It's based on um, the struggle standing in the supermarket and um, trying to um, get to know what you have in, uh, in your home, in your fridge or in your um, in your cupboard mm -hmm. uh, because um, we want to track everything you buy and everything you throw away. Mm -hmm. So if you buy a product, it gets to your um, stock list mm -hmm. uh, using um, RFID technology. And when you throw it away, the package, uh, the product is um, it's removed from, the, from your stock list. Um, also, if you uh, throw away the packaging, um, you will be uh, alerted if you throw it um, in the wrong um, bin. So if you have plastic packaging and you throw it into, uh, into the um, paper bin, um, you will get alerted. Um, so we want to um, have an impact um, on the environment and also like um, with the convenience, um, we want to try to, um, to reduce the throwaway uh, rate of um, of products of goods. Um, also, we have a, we want to include, include a smart scale to track the um, amount of um, like flour uh, which is removed uh, or which is used. Um, to also have a, um, a counter all the time mm -hmm. you have in your stock. Yes. So, why do you think that will succeed? Why do you think it will it might fail? The pros <laughs> are convenient. Um, it's also um, cost-effective mm -hmm. um, and uh, it would be um, also low cost for the supermarkets to add the RFID stickers 
mm -hmm. that they are like uh, really low cost. And they might already be there. Uh, yeah, on <laughs> some products they are already there. Um, the cons are you have to like um, try to convince the, um, the supermarkets to, all to implement it. Um, and if you don't like uh, do it on most of the um, bigger supermarkets, it won't be uh, feasible. Real success. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and also like you have to order new scales, new um, displays, new devices which uh, which track, or like a new um, dustbin and, um, and um, a new shopping bag to um, if this is a good fit. Okay, but I still think it's a good idea, and I think there's quite a lot of room for doing at least parts of your solution. Uh, yeah, out there. So our special team is not here today. Um, so I know that <laughs> they might actually uh, do something in the area of building a system to manage a zoo. And um, so they had kind of initially a kind of terrarium idea and I hope I could convince them to actually build an IoT system to manage a zoo and all the personal in the zoo and kind of have the large system. So a little bit like your uh, managing older people scenario for <laughs> managing pets and, and animals. And I like their idea. I think actually there might be also a market, but let's see how far that last team actually gets. Uh, I think there's a lot of research to do and I think you can do a lot of wrong things in terms of caring for the animals and really getting the right information there. And then the market share is of course a little smaller regarding them. And maybe if you scale it to home usage, that might be another good idea. So um, just in between, before we kind of head to the planning of our big event of having some visitors. So lab today will be very easy. Um, you work on project three. Uh, ah, one thing, um, I will go around and I assess your scenarios. I say, yeah, definitely say this is okay or you're missing a little bit or uh, you're doing too much, <laughs> restrict yourself. And also try to make sure you have all the hardware to need, uh, you need or that I can tell you, oh, that's not necessary or you can fake that. So at 10 o'clock, we have a call. And um, I think I will start about 5 to 10 to set everything up and start already talking to some persons. If you want, you can make a break at 5 to 10, but be back at 10 o'clock. So there will be three persons on this call. Flavia Andrade, Daniel uh, Villela uh, Plotrino, and Alexandre Moskin. Yeah. I want you to at least know what, who we are talking to. And with the company's names they are working for, you will actually find their profiles. So I want you to at least have in your team kind of that everybody reads something to it. So if the time gets too short. But try, try that you at, re at least read a little bit about everybody. Maybe focus on one person to answer the question. So in the team, I want to have the answer uh, for all of them where it says, which IoT, uh, which IoT domains are they influencing? Um, then two projects they are currently involved in uh, um, and two projects they were involved in before. Then how do they how is their impact on startups? You will see that all of them have a huge impact on startups, but how? And um, yeah, and then think about what you could ask this person relating to your own Project 3 startup idea. So how could these persons th think about what you could ask so that it could help you turning your own idea into a business and hopefully we'll have some time after day presenting that you can answer something. Okay. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much, guys, for, for joining me here today in the class. And you see kind of a little bit of this, the other students here who are actually taking my class. And uh, so the class is the introduction to the Internet of Things. And um, I recently started working with uh, Flavia. And so Flavia and I will do uh, embark on some Internet of Things related projects. Um, so if things work out, I think I will run the Internet of Things immersion program for her. So actually, it will work out and you will be in Chicago with us. <laughs> Freezing. <laughs>
<laughs> and uh, I also kind of heard that I might become an analyst for companies, startups in the Internet of Things area. Uh, so mm -hmm. if I hope all of you will actually embark on some business adventures, uh, adventures here. And maybe if yeah. you want to branch out into the world, I will take a look at what you are doing and give my okay. Yes, of course, as I all know you and I know we are doing great projects. Uh, I hope we will see some of you as a global player one day here. But uh, to exactly. encourage you, to encourage you to become one, um, we have uh, a couple of people who are active in the entrepreneurial world, and I am looking very forward to them sharing their knowledge regarding Internet of Things and business in the Internet of Things area. So I think at this point I hand my word to you, Flavia, and I will kind of go a little bit off the screen. You can see the students. And uh, then we will, I think we are all eager to hear what you have to say about uh, yeah, business in the Internet of Things space. Well, actually I cannot speak that much about business in the Internet of Things. That's why I got Daniel here. <laughs> you guys. Poor <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> Okay. But I can speak for um, wanting you guys to develop your startups if you that's something you do want because it's uh, in the beginning it's pretty hard as you probably know um, but later on it can become quite a nice ride. I mean I love it and it's nothing better than um, have that entrepreneurial spirit and have the initiative to make things happen. Um, I don't know how many of you know um, a lot of Americans, but that is uh, part of our culture in a way. Mm -hmm. um, I am Brazilian originally, but I live, I've been living in the US for half my life. I have this 16 year old face, but I, 41. Uh, so have 20 years I've been living in the US all over uh, and 18 in Chicago. Uh, what can I say? So started the International Accelerator. Uh, well, we are officially launching now in, in January and I'm in Brazil uh, to get the best, the best minds of the country and the best startups to um, internationalize to the US. Um, and when I mean internationalize, I don't mean only what we call soft landings. I mean also hard landings. So hard landings, um, it's when you expand your business, but you go with it. Then you can um, create what we call vertical um, growth. And that is when you start hiring people, right? Ah, Alex, good morning. Good um, morning. <laughs> so good morning. Are, Very nice voice. So got, <laughs> yeah, oh, I know, right? I know, totally. So I have... Uh, I, I have started like the a quick oh first of all uh do you give your release for Uli to record the session and so he can play it later uh for educational purposes Alessandra are you fine with having your talk uh, recorded so that the students who are no perfect today? okay <laughs> perfect. no problem at all no problem okay. at all I, no, I, I thought this question was not for me. <laughs> okay. No, no, we all, we're all, we're all good here. We're just waiting for you because I know um, I wasn't sure about you know Butero team being okay with it, but I mean, most part, yeah. I cannot talk to you. Daniel said it's okay for him, so yeah. So thank, no thank you, no Thank you for me uh, again for joining. So we already started a little bit, so I hope you don't mind. And uh, so I'm, yeah, I'm very sorry for being a little late. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm handing so, back to talk to uh, <laughs> Flavia. Yeah. yeah. So just to wrap it up, um, we are in Chicago. Uh, we're based on 1871, uh, but 1871 is a sister incubator to two other incubators, which is uh, Matter and Connectedry. Connectedry is uh, the IoT incubator that is powered by Bosch. So it's pretty cool. Uh, and these incubators are the largest ones in, in the Midwest. We're not Silicon Valley, but we're just as good and <laughs> if not better. <laughs> and uh, we kick ass from New York too. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you're, if you're keeping up with the news, but the New Yorkers are not happy with Amazon having their headquarters there, as expected. 
one question <laughs> between Flavia. What, at what point shall the students come and talk to you? Well, anytime. <laughs> My doors are open. I'm the only girl here, but you see, we Brazilians are very, so I'm, I'm going to have my Brazilian hat now, not my American hat. So we Brazilians are very um, welcoming people, right? We're very, we're very nice. We're always, um, uh, who is the student that wants to come to Brazil? Ah. <laughs> Hi. So Daniel, there you go. That's the one you might be able to help out. So Daniel is um I sent your resume to two people and oh Alex, I gotta send it to you too. So these two will take a look at your resume and see if they can help you out. Uh and there is one more person that is uh Fabi Makita. Mm -hmm. Um Alex that might be able to help you out. I, and if you uh, guys need more so. students, maybe we get some more, can convince some more here. So if, if this one student triggers more, I think I can uh, facilitate and start an exchange and vice versa probably too. So. <laughs> no, yeah, that is, that is our goal. So yeah, the, the focus, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever heard about uh, of uh, the Startup Genome Initiative. Uh, if you have not, then only you should show them. Mm -hmm. um, it is a great initiative that the goal is to close the gap was well, to study the overall ecosystem, the global ecosystem of entrepreneurship and to close the gap between uh, ecosystems. So uh, weaker ecosystems will be able to accelerate uh, further their growth. Um, and that's the purpose. Um, who Uli is now um, a part of it. Mm -hmm. Excitingly so. Uh, so as you can see, we're really trying to be global. We have people in South Korea. I mean, Uli is all over the place. Uh, my CEO is uh, his background is Indian, even though he was born in in uh, in the U.S. But again, a lot of people in the U.S. are like that, right? So they are born there, um, first generation, and our second generation. We are very used to say things like that. Oh, I'm first generation American or second generation American. Right, Uli, you probably have met plenty of people like that there. I mean, Uli himself is, uh, is a half breed like me, right? Yeah. So I'm like half Brazilian, half American. Uli is, is what, a third? So you're like um, American, Austrian, and German? Or I'm what just, is your... Just, just half German, half American, but... Uh... <laughs> Who knows? Okay, uh, Brazilian is very friendly. Is Maybe I've, yeah. I've become a little bit Brazilian. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. So, but in Europe, you guys are used to having people that have a <laughs> but, okay. but I'm also born in two languages. I only speak English and Portuguese. Uh, most, most Brazilians speak Portuguese and Spanish, but my Spanish is so bad that I don't even dare to say I speak <laughs> But yes, okay, so great meeting everyone. I look forward to seeing you in Chicago and Brazil and all over the place. If you have any questions about uh, startups, overall ecosystems, um, just to, um, to wrap it up, the tendency are deep wave and third wave, uh, deep tech and third wave, uh, and IoT fits in both, obviously. Um, but that's that's pretty much it. Okay, so it's up to you if you want Dan to start or Alex. <laughs> Agreement? My people. <laughs> Makes it, you who know, it's who good will start? <laughs> yeah. Daniel or Daniel Alex. Alex. Okay. Should talk. Shall, shall... Okay, okay. Uh, well, I'm uh, gonna present myself firstly. Uh, thank you to this uh, opportunity. I think it's uh, very rich to to share some knowledge and uh, mainly for this kind of technologies that they are uh, starting uh, to grow all over the world. So uh, uh, it's very important to to uh, um, share our knowledge as as Flavia is doing also is promoting uh, with the startups. Well, uh, basically, I'm I am an engineer, right? Uh, I am a telecommunications engineer. I started uh, uh, 20 years ago uh, working with uh, uh, telecommunication, basically with wireless tele telecommunications, 
uh, I started with uh, uh, as a, a radio frequency engineer. So uh, when I talk about the Internet of Things, is a, uh, it's a technology that I am very uh, close uh, for so so many years, right? And um, um, basically, today I have been working in a lot of companies here in Brazil, international companies. Uh, like uh, Nokia, uh, Siemens, um, uh, also Alcatel, uh, working basically uh, building uh, infrastructure networks for wireless technologies. Uh, and uh, la the last years, um, I have been also um, um, being an entrepreneur, right? I started my first startup in 2013. Uh, it was a, a IoT platform for health. Uh, basically, we had a, a, a platform that uh, joined a lot of uh, devices, health devices, uh, to promote the, the health. Uh, and we started in the, in the B2C, in the business to consumer. Uh, it was a failure, right? Uh, I, I'm going to start with a failure because uh, really to be an entrepreneur is not easy, as Flavia told. Um, this startup uh, started in the B2C uh, and we spent a lot of money on that uh, to, to get the crowd. And it, it was not easy. We tried for uh, basically one year and we saw that it was not a, a very easy a field to play um, and we decided to change a little bit to go to the B2B okay um, so with the the platform that we we have built um, we started to make um, health programs uh, inside the companies using technology using internet of things and wearables and it was uh, we, we did good. It was a very good change. We got some good clients, some, some nice clients, uh, customers. Um, it was a, a successful change. And um, so this is, um, this, this first uh, uh, failure showed, showed me one, one very important thing that uh, today when I, I I am uh, right now. I am mentor also. I I, I I have a company today. I have a consulting company um, uh, where I I help uh, new business. I have I help uh, traditional companies to to go through a digital transformation. Okay, I help them to build new products. I help them to uh, build new uh, uh, business models. And some of them uh, uh, requires to bring some new technologies, right? So um, I help them to go to uh, to sell to new digital channels, um, and uh, also select those new technologies to build their their new business or to change their their business. This is very important. And in some of them are companies that they are more, uh, they, they have more than 50 years uh, um, in the market. Uh, usually they are very traditional. Uh, they are from, from families, uh, owners, and they have no time to, to or, or they have no, uh, nobody to see the, the technologies there that are popping up um, and change their business so easily. So, um, I help them to select that. And the IoT is one of the technologies that are really uh, being a game changer, right? Um, I am involved in some projects now, um, uh, basically one of them that uh, we are uh, using a lot of, of uh, Internet of Things. And um, also, this is the reason that I... I um, I met Flavia. I I am part. I am director of the Federation of Industries uh, from São Paulo State in Brazil. São Paulo is the the greatest uh, state in in Brazil, the largest, and 
uh, we have a federation here for the industries and there uh, I make part of the one department that we we take care of the uh, startups ecosystem we help the startups ecosystem uh, we help the, the startups to grow um, we have one of the, the major um, events here in Brazil for startups is a it's a contest that happens in two days and uh, we have some uh, big numbers here reaching the, the startups and as I, I have been talking uh, one of the, the uh, very important issues one of the very important focus that you you need to have when we build a startup no matter the technology that you are using is uh, really to explore very deeply the, the problem that you are solving right because um, if you are not exploring very well, no matter the, the technology that you are using, uh, the chance to fail uh, rises a lot, okay? So uh, before to choose any technology that you are going to use in your project, you have to explore very well the problem. This is the, the first, uh, um, and the, I think it's the most important thing that you have to think about it. Um, in terms of uh, how uh, tech, um, IoT, uh, one of another another uh, tip that I I, I am very uh, I always um, think about it, it's uh, IoT alone is nothing, right? Um, IoT is a technology that uh, help you to get a lot of information that before uh, you don't use to to take or you don't used to have like that. Uh, but after you have this whole information, a lot of, inf of information, you need a lot of things to work over this information. So you, you need a, 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 a big data technology, we, you're gonna need a, um, a in uh, artificial intelligence uh, technology to really work well with this, this uh, data that you are taking in order to give you a, a, um, um, a result in the end of the line. This is very important because uh, collect a lot of, of uh, data that you, you, you didn't collect before um, and just put in a, in a, a database means nothing, right? Um, well, uh, talking about uh, the projects that are, I have been involved with here, um, uh, today I am in, uh, talking about the market, right? Um, uh, I don't, I don't know uh, if you have uh, any questions about that. Um, I, I prefer to make uh, this introduction, and I would like you. Uh, uh, what are your doubts about that? What, what you would like to to hear about the market here? Because it's a lot of things that I can talk about it. Uh, unmute myself so <laughs> to actually say something. Okay. Um, yeah. I, of course, I have questions, but I, I, I'm looking forward to to meet you guys in person and discuss some of the things. So I rather give the word to my students. <laughs> so um, anything kind of regarding relating to your own projects where you kind of have a question how that could work in Brazil or how that could work worldwide? Any doubts? Any ideas you want to share? You all should have prepared some questions, so you just need to now <laughs> bring them. No need to be shy, we're pretty easy going here. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, the, the aim is really to have a conversation, right? Um, well, um, so I can, I, I, sorry. Well, Another thing that, that I, well, I, Alex has not introduced himself yet, so how about Alex talks a little bit while you guys prepare some questions. Okay, good. <laughs> question. Very good. <laughs> okay, so uh, my name is Alexandre, but you can call me Alex, which is I've a lot easier. I've already started doing that, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very good. So, um, originally, um, I am a graphic production technologist. So I worked in a graphic field for, for a long time. 
uh, and then I migrated to, to, to project management and uh, IT. Um, um, but to be sincere, before that, I, I've worked with, uh, on the third sector, on NGOs. Uh, so I worked a lot with uh, human development and uh which is something very interesting right so i worked with human development and then i started working with it which are two completely different worlds which were two completely different worlds right uh and um so then i started working at votorantim cementos where i am right now uh votorantim is uh the biggest uh um corporate group here in brazil and uh, it has many different uh, units. I, I work specifically for the cement unit, but uh, we have cement, uh, mining, um, cellulose and paper, orange juice, you know, many, many different uh, uh, units, uh, even a bank. Um, and uh, from the IT perspective, um, Two years ago, we started working with open innovation. So we started to get connected to the open innovation ecosystems, to startups, universities, research centers, technology institutes, even government. And uh, so we we had we we done uh, we are on the second cycle right now. Uh, on the first cycle, uh, we. We ran uh, seven pilots uh, for seven different uh, 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 challenges, and uh, they are all related to the industry 4.0. And of course, there are uh, some that use IoT technologies. Um, I could even, you know, uh, if you guys uh, uh, would like, you know, if there is any question regarding to it, I can talk specifically about. Uh, uh, the pilots we ran here um, and right now we are on the second cycle focused on uh, solutions for for our uh, concrete area but meanwhile when we started to connect to the ecosystem uh, I also started to connect to many uh, other companies who uh, uh, which actually work already with open innovation and, and companies uh, which would like to start to 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 work, uh, and one very interesting thing is that we realize that there are many places that solve the density of startups. I mean, uh, we have here in Brazil uh, big buildings where all the startups, not all, of course, but many startups uh, are there uh, physically, and uh, that brings uh, what we call serendipity, right? So you put all the startups together and you know, one start talking to the other and they, they evolve exponentially, right? They, they, they can even have complementary services and so on. But there was no place that solved the density of corporates, right? Then the, the, uh, all of the companies, of course, they cannot go to one building, right? Uh, uh, and uh, so we started a movement, w which we call Open Innovation BR, Open Innovation Brazil. And uh, this movement started to put all the companies together to talk about, you know, their biggest issues, their biggest pains and challenges and, and how, what they're doing to solve. And we exchange experiences and information and uh, that uh, grew exponentially. You know, it, it's, it's huge now. So we have uh, uh, more than, than, than 1,300 people uh, participating on the movement, more than 40 uh, uh, corporations, uh, uh, a lot of, lot of startups, a lot of universities, and so on. Um, we, we've done uh, 16 uh, meetings all over Brazil. Uh, and as you know, Brazil is uh, gigantic, as the U.S. is. So imagine having meetings all over the country. Um, and uh, the, the focus of the meeting is really uh, to, to exchange practices and, and, and knowledge. Uh, and even we evolved a little to, 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 to uh, 
actually have uh, uh, matchmaking connections, right? To understand what are the necessities of the companies and, 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 and uh, uh, invite uh, the ecosystem to participate and to talk straight to the company. Uh, so I have the work at Botunitin Cimentos with Open Innovation and also this uh, 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 side job, let's call it, <laughs> volunteer, 100% volunteer on the uh, uh, Open Innovation Brazil. Um, so at Votorantim Cimentos, uh, right now we, uh, we have, uh, uh, when, when I started to, to work, there was no position focused on specifically on open innovation. And right now there is, right? So we are starting. So I would love to have, you know, an intern of, uh, you know, specialists in IoT and everything because, uh, but, but still there is no uh, structure uh, for that yet. Uh, but uh, there could be a possibility inside of, uh, of uh, what we call uh, uh, TA, it's uh, automation technology. Um, we have inside of the IT department, we have um, automation technology uh, uh, unit, and uh, uh, this unit is responsible for the Internet of Things, and we are creating a specific roadmap for uh, the industry 4.0, right? Mm -hmm. So, yes, is that a question? No, I, yeah, I'm kind of um, uh, trying to- You're vibrating. <laughs> to, 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 to steer this now to a dialogue. Um, I know that because we have kind of an, yeah, pretty healthy engineering uh, or entrepreneurial spirit here in Austria, um, I think there should be, or I think we have some questions kind of, uh, yeah, what if you start a company, if you really are young and kind of come and, and try things out? I liked that Daniel actually said, oh, some things didn't work out in the beginning. And uh, then we had to adjust and then the next project was actually successful. Um, Alexandra, what, what, what do you see of working with kind of smaller companies? Uh, what are the do's and don'ts? Uh, maybe also especially in regards of a gigantic country like Brazil, which might not apply to Austria, but I think if people think about, yeah, conquering the world, they might have to think about, <laughs> yeah, uh, space and uh, that things work differently in other countries than they might work in Europe. Yeah, I even, I even mentioned to, to Flavia, if she, she talks to, there is a specific place here we call the Cube, <laughs> and uh, it's it's a building yeah the cube it's a building uh that holds uh, uh i don't know how many startups now flavia now that you have visited them uh yeah, it was 400 canapa no. was like uh, yeah they have tons uh yeah Kubu is, it's an incubator so they i think you guys already know some of the lingo right i uh, used in the in the innovation uh ecosystem uh, ecosystem i suppose we can call it that um there are accelerators that's what I'm, i am incubators co-working spaces so you guys know that right yeah but I'm, I'm just yeah. mentioning <laughs> i'm just mentioning this place because for example I, i'm pretty sure that if you guys uh, are willing to work uh, for a startup here in brazil for example which would be an amazing opportunity uh i believe places like this can offer opportunities. If you go right now to, to the Cube web, website, there are already positions that they, they, they need professionals to work. So I believe it would be, uh, they are, you know, there are two complete different experiences. Work for a giant corporation will bring you uh, some challenges, and, but working for a startup will bring you completely different challenges, right? Uh, yeah. the, the, the speed uh, of things and the speed of work and even the speed of learning uh, on, on working on, on a very small startup, I believe would be a lot bigger than working for a big corporation. But of course, you know, there are different levels of maturities of different corporations also, right? So there are some big corporations that have a maturity, a technology maturity, let's call it, uh, that will bring you a lot of um, a lot of uh, teachings and knowledge, right? So, 
Do anything, anything follow up here? Um, guys, ask some questions, either about an own company idea, about these guys have really a lot of experience. So, uh, or ask about some things when, which went wrong. This is also fine. <laughs> yes. That's actually pretty common too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so he asked, uh, uh, he's actually working in a nursing home uh, environment and uh, they are actually having in their team a, a project around the nursing home and around health. And so he asked, why, why did this fail, Danielle, before? And uh, uh, what do they have to pay attention to? And, uh, and he thinks it's actually a pretty promising area. So why, why didn't you succeed? Just, just one thing okay. before, uh, before Dan answers. Um, you guys don't have to feel um, timid if you don't uh, speak English fluently. Uh, so you can, you can see what it, it's a German in Austria that you speak? Yes. I'm just, so there you go. I know. Uh, you, can, you can speak in German and I'm sure Uli can just translate to us. So yeah. if that's, if language barrier might be, uh, might be the issue. So they are all pretty uh, good. They are all pretty good, <laughs> but but I uh, the, because of the microphone setup and so it might sometimes be hard to to convey the message. So I will try to facilitate uh, yeah. their questions. Okay, uh, yeah, Daniel, and also uh, Alessandro, if you have some insights into the health sector, we're both also happy to hear your ideas about it. So why is it hard, or why could it be hard to? Uh, get your footage when you build new supporting systems for the health sector. And how would it be in Brazil? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I would say that Brazil has a, a, a plus on that because um, the health system here in Brazil, the, uh, the health business here in Brazil is very hard because of the regulations, right? Uh, we have a, a, a regulator that, uh, they are harder than FDA and all the regulators that you would know in the world. It's really hard to, to uh, really um, have one product that are um, uh, authorized to be a health product here in Brazil, right? Uh, it's a very a painful process. Uh, usually, uh, when you have a new product, a new product for for health, you can take up to three or four years to get a certification for your product to be a health product. So, when you build a business in health, you have to put this in the in the uh, in your um, plan. Uh, that means uh, three years. Uh, depend on the. Of course, it's not so. Uh, I'm I'm uh, talking very uh, fast here, but uh, depend on the kind uh, on the type of the product that you are doing. Right, uh, but uh, it's it's uh, less than one year. It's impossible to have one one, one health product in the market in terms of certifications, right? Uh, all the certifications that you have to go through in order to uh, uh, be authorized to to sell this product. Uh, beyond of that, I think uh, our failure uh, was based in two things: the value proposition. I think that uh, uh, in the beginning, the, the value proposition of our uh, solution was not so clear for the, the people. And uh, I saw many doubts in terms of uh, what you are offering to me, right? This, is, this must be very clear to the customer uh, uh, and very open. And, and second is the uh, marketing for the crowd. This is very hard. Uh, before to open my my startup, I I have been working only with uh, large corporations uh, in the business to business, so I had no experience in the business to consumer, and this is very uh, different. Okay, uh, if you are, if you are not use use uh, uh, very uh, familiar with this market, um, 
it's completely uh, different uh, to sell in the B2B or uh, uh, compared to B2C. And um, so uh, when, when we started to sell our product and we saw that we, uh, we need an, uh, uh, a lot of money to, to, to work with marketing, uh, to really make the, the product known in the, uh, in the market, uh, compete with the big brands, with the large brands, um, to keep uh, your product as a, a, a wish product in the market. It's a very f hard, you have to always be investing money on that. So those are basically the reasons that uh, made, made this failure, okay? Made, made us to, to, to get failure. And well, I think this, this is uh, basically the, the, the answer. So, um, yeah, uh, one, uh, one of the disruptors we also always, uh, oh, sorry, Alessandra. So do you want to add something here? Uh, I was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just, please, uh, then very quickly. let's continue. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know what is the, the uh, maturity level of of the the healthcare field uh, in your country, but usually, uh, in many different countries, uh, the um, the healthcare field is not very uh, uh, professional. It's really uh, you know there are doctors uh, administrating. There are uh, 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 health. Um, health professionals administrating everything, and that that changed changes the culture of the health field. So uh, there is a, a movement all, all over the world of professionalization, let's call it. You know, so really having administrators uh, 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 making the decisions and everything. Uh, so it, it is a, a harder market to enter because uh, to convince. Uh, a typical administrator to use one technology that will bring a lot of value and everything, uh, you do it one way. But to, to convince a doctor, to convince a, a health professional, it's completely different. So you need a lot of health background. You need to have a you need to rely on a professional or you, have, you need to have a health professional on your team to translate, <laughs> to talk, you know, uh, really uh, 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 the, the health field language and to understand what really is a, a, a good value for them. So uh, I've, seen, I've seen it happening here in Brazil, a lot of people offering product, uh, uh, just, just to, uh, 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 to give you a little more of, of, of background, my wife is the director of the Brazilian Institute of Cancer, the IBCC. And so uh, I, I talk a lot to a lot of people from, from the health field. And um, so I've seen a lot of people offering products and services to the hospitals as if they are offering uh, 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 to a non-health professional, right? So it's completely different. So you have to have a lot of uh, 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 health background. You have, uh, you have to, to, to have a professional with you to help you. You, have, you need a mentor or someone on your team on the health field. That helps a lot. So I was kind of thinking, um, so you kind of say uh, regulations are hard if you really want to enter a new market. And I think that's pretty true in Europe here too so we you, you guys are very proud about the having lots of bureaucracy in brazil but don't think that the european <laughs> union would uh, be short on that so <laughs> there is a lot of this one here too and um, so this is why kind of disruptive things like uber or kind of gig economy ideas have a little trouble here because they fight the regulations and that's kind of easier in the us but uh, so uber is actually successful in brazil so I wonder, what do you guys think if you, we have some of these mechanisms in basically grassroots and re-networking people in the health area with abilities of Internet of Things, would that have a chance? So if you kind of think differently in kind of networking the doctor directly with the patient or um, kind of giving devices out or even you measure things yourself, 
and uh, kind of send it to the doctor and the doctor basically prescribes something based on that. Would that be a chance for something like that? So kind of a different way of thinking about health? Nobody wants to answer. <laughs> yeah. I was waiting for Daniel because he has he has experience on the health field. Okay. Yeah, well, Brazil, because US is pretty different than here. So I'm gonna. I don't know much about Brazil myself, even though I'm Brazilian. Here, so I have the two experts here, <laughs> and I'm here getting their advice as well. So Dan or Alex, that's that's on you. Yeah, well, uh, I see uh, the, the health companies, the ha health startups that I have been, that I seen that they are successful right now here are the healthcare comp uh, startups that I, they are working with uh, uh, problems in the health, uh, for, for example, for um, uh, issues that they have in the hospitals, infra infrastructure hospitals uh, of, of the hospitals, right? So. Uh, is not directly involved with the the a product for the the healthcare, but a product that to, that solve a big problem in the uh, in the health uh, health system, right? Uh, to have an idea, the uh, the the telecom the medical teleconference here is not allowed, right? So uh, all this this uh, uh, telehealth that we have in the world. Or even the the um, uh, uh, the electronic uh, records, they are not allowed right now. So uh, even this these new things that we have in the in the um, innovation of for healthcare in the world, uh, they are not used here. Uh, oh, of course, the, there are some uh, initiatives, but uh, I have been helping a company that they are they have a, a very nice electronic record solutions and they are fighting for many years to to sell to the hospitals uh, mainly because uh, most of the hospitals that uh, big hospitals that we have here uh, we have a lot of, of uh, um, public hospitals right uh, it's not easy to 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 sell to the to, to the government uh, mainly when we talk about innovation it's a very long process, uh, a lot of conversation. As, as Alex said, uh, it's very hard to, to convince the doctors. Uh, usually, you need a lot of uh, uh, studies, a lot of uh, um, results uh, to show them that it's really, uh, uh, this product is very helpful. And it's not easy to get that when you are a startup, right? Uh, for uh, um, uh, I had a, another experience that I I, I started to represent a, 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 Isha, a, a company from Israel um, that they have a very nice solution there. Uh, basically, were was two solutions. Uh, one was a software, and another one is a device uh, using Internet of Things to to collect some some uh, heart uh, data. And you have a very nice results and a and, uh, 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 very fast results. Uh, you don't need to go to the doctor and, and make a lot of exams. And I tried to develop market for them for a time. And it, it was very hard because uh, the doctors, they, they asked me for a lot of results with the Brazilian crowd. Okay, the Brazilian population, they want a, a lot of results, uh, clinical results with many people tried. Uh, and I, I, we had this kind of results, but uh, it was not done in the Brazilian population. And they don't want that. They want with the Brazilian population because they said that this is uh, the, the behavior is very different. Um, you cannot trust in the results that are made in another country. So we have to make these clinical trials here in Brazil for a long period with more than 100 uh, uh, patients. Um, so uh, we decided to really, it was, it was not successful. I stopped to, to, to develop um, this, this um, uh, 
this business for them because uh, we 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 saw that it's a lot of barriers to 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 come and they don't want to spend a lot of money to bring the the, the product here right uh, this uh, this is one of the problems that another problem is that uh, the device that they want to 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 bring to test here it will gonna take like two or three years to get the certification for sale to the Brazilian market and uh, they really didn't want to to uh, spend this money during two or three years to to uh, achieve the Brazilian market so but when you when you uh, go to the problems uh, of infrastructure of the hospital I mean uh, things that are not related directly to the uh, with the doctor but with the uh, for example uh, the, uh, I mean, with the TI of the, the hospital, with the, uh, uh, the hotelry of the hospital, right? Be uh, for example, to, uh, the, uh, the change of beds, or I, I, had a, a, I have been talking with a very nice uh, a, a solution that one of the, the startups were doing. Uh, they have uh, one of the problems of the hospitals uh, probably this is a, a, a problem that we have uh, all over the world uh, when a patient leaves the the uh, the hospital uh, sometimes the the time between leave the hospital and get clean the room for the next patients take a lot of time because uh, the patient leaves the the um the room, and sometimes the, uh, he doesn't say, "Oh, I'm leaving." You can clean the room, and uh, the the um, the people that uh, clean and prepare for the next, they take a time to to see that this this room is free. And if you take the uh, if you take a very big hospital with a lot of rooms, the time that this this uh, bed stays uh, with nobody and uh, not ready for the next person is uh, a lot of hours per month i, I don't know exactly how how much hours uh, how many hours uh, they they, uh, they keep uh, with nobody but um, if you if you make the count you see that you are not using the room uh, your your full potential uh, and you are you are uh, 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 wasting this money, uh, you are lost. You, know? you are uh, wasting this money that the, the the room is not ready for the next. And they started to use Internet of Things, put a sensor in the in uh, in the bed to see if the the patient is there. And they using some algorithms to to calculate uh, uh, um, to see the the behavior of the patients. They can. Uh, um, Make an alarm to the guys. Oh, hey, this is this room is not a. Uh, the the patient leaves, and you can clean for the next. And then they are optimizing a, a very law, uh, uh, in a very clever, clever uh, uh, way. The, they are uh, using better the, the 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 rooms and getting more money for that. That that's very important. But this is not involved uh, uh, exactly with the uh, solution for health, solution for the doctors, right, or the patients. Yeah, very nice. So thanks for this uh, idea. And I think some of our, my students, are, so some of them actually dealing with uh, cleaning toilets and uh, kind of making schedules for that. I think they they recognize <laughs> that idea here, um, Alessandra. Um, I. In, or all of you. So I have to wrap up kind of before 11 o'clock here because I think around then they will kick us out of the room. So we have kind of six minutes left. Um, Alexander, I, I like the the mining connection, industry for zero connection. So I was wondering, how can a small startup actually get into there? So even I have worked with some startups before and um, so I was talking with a guy working on an oil rig and he said, yeah, of course, we need a lot of things in the area of Internet of Things, but we pay 20 times what you actually have to pay because also regulations and stuff. So uh, how do you get into mining as an Internet of Things person? 
Very good. And actually, uh, you were very lucky because mining is the only, uh, we ran seven pilots, as, as, as I told you, and uh, the mining solution was the only one that we actually hired. So I have a good case to, to tell you. <laughs> uh, so uh, we, we hired a startup that uses uh, not actually Internet of Things. They use uh, artificial intelligence and computer vision to analyze satellite images. And uh, we use that for two things. We use that for uh, the um, uh, mining exploitation areas and just to make sure that we are not getting close to the limits, right? because we have a specific limit by the government to explore. And there is always a fight. You know, the Brazilian government say, oh, you were exploring off limits. And I said, no, we are not. Come here and calculate. And, you know, it's just a reference is, is not right. So uh, now we have, uh, with the satellite image, geo-reference, geo right? So it's 100% sure by the GPS points that, you know, so we are exploiting the right area. But uh, 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 the, the, the main point is not only about the exploitation, it's about, about reforestation because uh, uh, we have to reforest, right? And um, there are areas, for example, that, you know, there is a uh, 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 fire uh, on the woods or something like this, and then there is a, 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 a big place that opens. And, and, and we, we didn't see it, right? Because it's so vast, it's so gigantic, the area. Uh, well, of course, we monitor and everything, but uh, when we find out, of course, the government finds out before us. Right? So we have to uh, uh, pay a fine and then we have to reforest again. And, you know, so because it's our responsibility to take care. With this solution, we are monitoring real time. So if there is a, a, a very small change, uh, the, uh, then we can uh, 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 interact uh, real time. Right. So only only with this solution, oh, the business case that 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 that, that we uh, we actually predicted of this solution is 12 million AIs, of course, which is a little different, but 12 million AIs uh, per year that we are we are uh, uh, um, that that we are saving. saving. Right. For it's this solution. Kind of just yes. for the guys here, it's about divided by four to get into euros. Yeah? Exactly. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so, so that's the solution we used, is not uh, related to, to specifically to IoT, uh, but uh, another, uh, another part that, you know, that I can see a lot of use of IoT, and it was one of, the, the, one of our challenges that we didn't find the solution yet, so if you guys, <laughs> if you guys are willing to create is, uh, the mining, the mining sector is, uh, you know, it's very, 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 very low cost of the product, right? So you can imagine that everything around, for example, logistics needs to be, you know, uh, uh, optimized to the best level, right? Because if we, if the cost of logistics is a little higher, then it's impeditive for for the mining exploitation. So uh, to, to have uh, 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 a tracking device, for example, uh, on all of the, the equipments to, 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 to monitor and to, to optimize all the operation, right? This makes a huge difference for us. And it's so simple, right? When you think it's so simple, but actually it's not because you can imagine when you have where the places where you have the mining exploitation uh, there is no 3g or 4g signal like like there's no internet connection and and and, and to bring the, the the connection to bring the internet internet connection to those places is is very expensive so you so need a tracking device we have oh, done sorry, a little sorry. bit on we have done a little bit on Laura, so and so I want oh. to connect that for them. Perfect. <laughs> and Perfect. So that might be something where Laura could make a lot of sense in this area to deploy sure. kind of a wide area network, sure. a, a low power wide area network in a in a short time. 
Okay, Alessandro, can you wrap up and then I will wrap up and then <laughs> well, we... Sure, I will... know, no, we, we are completely out, out of time, right? We have one minute, right? So, no, but... but uh, it's, it's fine, uh, I think uh, we I, do I, have five minutes more, but uh, yeah. we should start wrapping up. So I, I would invite all of you guys to, to, to search a little more about, you know, about, about Brazil and all, all the possibilities and all the opportunities because uh, uh, it is really a huge country with, with a lot of opportunities. And uh, the, the, the Brazilian uh, startup ecosystem is, is flourishing, you know, it's, uh, uh, and uh, uh, I believe, you know, uh, if I were you guys, uh, just <laughs> I would prefer I would prefer working for a startup than working for a giant company. I know that working for a giant company would would give you you know a, an experience on a resume that you know might look better, but seriously, the real experience uh, 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 I believe would come for uh, working for a startup here in Brazil, and there are plenty of opportunities. That's a really nice wrap up there um, <laughs> and, and totally what I want to transport to my students here too. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> Daniel, do you have something similar to say? Yeah, yeah. It's a really uh, amazing. The ecosystem here is, is going very well, growing very fast, I mean. And uh, a lot of them, they are working with Internet of Things. Uh, so you can find a plenty of, of choices here. And uh, we, we are also in terms of infrastructure here for Internet of Things going very fast. We, we have a, a, a Sigfox here in Brazil. We have uh, a lot of network that uh, a, a large company uh, just um, started the, the last month here. So uh, if, you, if you want to build a, a device with the Internet of Things right now, you don't need to make your, uh, your lot of network. You can use a, a, a lot of network from another company that uh, they, have, they are covering the whole uh, city of Sao Paulo you know, and a lot of other cities in Brazil. And I love this this uh, this uh, subject. And uh, one hour is uh, uh, is a few time to talk, uh, a lot of things to talk. But uh, of course, if you need any, uh, if you need to uh, to talk more about that, if if I can help sharing another another experience, I'm I'm very glad to do that. Um, count with me, okay. Thanks so much. Um, Flavia, do you also want to say some uh, last things and then we finish? I actually remember one a startup that uh, Alex uh, gave me for us to internationalize trackage. And if I remember correctly, they are an IoT company. So exactly. that's the best of the both worlds. Maybe they have an internship position that already, they are a startup that works for a big company. So there you go. <laughs> you might end up with a startup and a big company in the process. So I can definitely connect you or Alex can also connect you. But again, uh, whoever is interested in doing an internship in Brazil, you can forward the resumes uh, to Uli. Uli will forward it to me and then I'll make sure uh, to hand it off to everyone else uh, that I can think of that can help out, including obviously Dan and, and Alex. And I'm sure they will be uh, eager to pass them along to even more people. So that's the power of network, right? Uh, who you know is very, it's very good, it's very important, and it's, uh, it can make a, a huge difference for your career. Yeah, uh, my huge thanks, and I hope also thanks from all the students. Sorry for kind of keeping you here a little longer. As I said, tomorrow we will start a little later. <laughs> and um, yeah, thanks to you three. So even it was a short time, but I think there were a lot of kind of small ideas and experiences which came over. I definitely look, uh, f so I hope I will meet all of you very soon. I'm back next year in Brazil. And uh, maybe there will be some projects where even these guys will be uh, involved. And um, yeah, especially in the LoRa and tracking area, I think there is a lot we can hopefully do together. Uh, but apart from that, I'm just also looking forward to in a casual manner exchange experience 
And uh, yeah, let's see how we can get the Internet of Things in the future together. Right. And, uh, Thanks a lot. And through us, I was looking forward to see you again. You can start in Brazil, end up in Chicago. You can start in Chicago, end up in Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> we can take you all, um, all around the world. So thank you so much for, and if having, you, for having me. And I'm sure uh, it's been a great and if if you guys are interested in doing projects in Central Europe, I think I can be a bridge in the reverse direction too. So, <laughs> very good. To okay, know. thanks a lot, and uh, hopefully talk to you soon. Uh, good luck with all your projects, and uh, yeah. Until then, <laughs> thank, thank you very thank much. You. Guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you.